Les circonstances du décès de Muammar Kadhafi de dizaines de ses partisans ne sont pas claires, affirme ce mercredi Human Rights Watch. Presque un an après la mort du dirigeant libyen, cette ONG de défense des droits de l'homme affirme, preuve à l'appui, que ces hommes ont été violemment battus puis exécutés. Des faits en contradiction avec les affirmations des autorités qui expliquaient alors que le Raïs avait été tué dans un échange de tirs et non après sa capture. Le gouvernement ne peut valider et permettre que de tels crimes restent impunis. C'est très dangereux car dans un sens, cela envoie le message que ce genre d'abus contre Kadhafi et contre ses anciens partisans, militaires, politiciens ou citoyens, peuvent être acceptés et impunis. Et cela donne le feu vert aux assassinats ciblés que nous avons vus dans l'Est de la Libye, par exemple. Selon ce rapport, des miliciens de l'opposition auraient capturé et désarmé les membres du convoi de Kadhafi à Sirte. Les enquêteurs de l'ONG se sont rendus sur place à l'époque et ont découvert 66 victimes dont certaines avaient une balle dans la tête et les mains liées dans le dos. L'ONG appelle les autorités à mener une enquête sur ces exécutions qualifiées de crimes de guerre, les plus graves abus commis par les forces de l'opposition. Well, we're, hey, that's we're, a rep we're that's working a hard. We're working hard. I said at the end of the day, at the end of the day, maybe next year. It will be. It will be next year. Yeah, look, I'm waiting. Look, uh, look I, I, think the, I think the president has been very, very clear on this. He has always said all options are on the table, and he means it. They're having pr troubles now. The sanctions are not complete yet. We want to squeeze them down more, but they're having an effect. And then, frankly, there are those who are saying the best thing that could happen to us is be attacked by somebody. <laughs> you know, yeah, just yeah. bring it on, because yeah. that would unify yeah. us, it would legitimize the regime. An argument is made constantly uh, on the hard line side of the Iranian uh, government that, you know, we're not going to give anything up, and in fact, we're going to provoke an attack, because then um, we will be in power for as long as anyone can imagine. And that's the reason I say, if anybody's going to do it, we ought to do it, because we have the capability of doing it. And hopefully we won't get to that. Okay. I mean, um, that, that, that would be, that would be uh, I think, uh, I don't think Russia and China believe they are paying any price at all, nothing at all, for standing up on behalf of the Assad regime. The only way that will change is if every nation represented here directly and urgently makes it clear that Russia and China will pay a price because they are holding up progress, blockading it, that is no longer tolerable. What I said yesterday um, is that the claims by President Putin and other Russians uh, that they had to go into Crimea um, and maybe further into eastern Ukraine uh, because they had to protect the Russian uh, minorities. And that is reminiscent of claims that were made back in the 1930s when uh, Germany under uh, the Nazis uh, kept talking about how they had to protect German minorities in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, and elsewhere throughout Europe. So I just want everybody to have a little historic perspective. I'm not making a comparison, certainly, but I am uh, recommending that we perhaps can learn from uh, this tactic that has been used before. Well, he's very tough. He's a very um, arrogant um, person to deal with. Uh, sure. And I would be thrilled if the Russian people, who are so capable, uh, had a normal country that they could chart a different future. I think that will be next to impossible, at least for the short term with Putin. Most leaders are not going to make decisions based on their personal relationships. You know, this is the president that looked in the soul of Putin and 
I could have told him he was a KGB agent. By definition, he doesn't have a soul. I mean, this is a waste of time, right? Государственный деятель должен иметь голову. И чтобы il est préférable de ne pas débattre avec les femmes. Quant à Mme Clinton, elle n'a jamais été trop subtile dans ses déclarations. Mais cela ne nous a pas empêché de la rencontrer lors de différents événements internationaux et de discuter normalement. Je pense qu'ici également, nous pourrions trouver un langage commun. Mais quand les gens dépassent certaines limites de politesse, cela montre leur faiblesse, pas leur force. Pour une femme, cependant, la faiblesse n'est pas tellement un défaut. And Russian President Vladimir Putin this morning is calling Hillary Clinton weak and ungraceful. French reporters asked him about the former Secretary of State. In March, Clinton compared Russia's takeover of Crimea to Adolf Hitler's expansion of Germany. Putin said, quote, it's better not to argue with women. But Ms. Clinton has never been too graceful. When people push boundaries too far, it's not because they are strong, but because they are weak. But maybe weakness is not the worst quality for a woman. We went after Iraq. They did not knock down the World Trade Center, okay? It wasn't the Iraqis that knocked down the World Trade Center. We went after Iraq. We decimated the country. Iran's taken over, okay? But it wasn't the Iraqis. Uh, you will find out who really knocked down the World Trade Center because they have papers in there that are very secret. You may find it's the Saudis, okay? We don't want World War III over Syria, okay? We don't want World Do we agree with that? We don't want World War But On Monday, George W. Bush will campaign in South Carolina for his brother. As you said tonight, and you've often said, the Iraq war and your opposition to it was a sign of your good judgment. In 2008, in an interview with Wolf Blitzer talking about President George W. Bush's conduct for the war, you said you were surprised that Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi didn't try to impeach him. You said, quote, which personally I think would have been a wonderful thing, a close quote. When you were asked what you meant by that, you said, for the war, for the war. He lied. He got us into the war with lies. Do you still believe President Bush should be impeached? Obviously, the war in Iraq was a big, fat mistake, all right? Now, you can take it any way you want, and it took, Je it took Jeb Bush, if you remember, at the beginning of his announcement, when he announced for president, took him five days, he went back. It was a mistake, it wasn't a mistake. It took him five days before his people told him what to say, and he ultimately said it was a mistake. The war in Iraq, we spent $2 trillion, thousands of lives. We don't even have it. Iran is taking over Iraq with the second largest oil reserves in the world. Obviously, it was a mistake. So George Bush made a mistake. We so, can make mistakes, but that one was a beauty. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. But so you, so I mean, it's, hey. so you still think he should be in peace? I think it's my turn, isn't it? You do whatever you want. You call it whatever you want. I want to tell you. They lied. Okay. They said there were weapons of mass destruction. There were none, and they knew there were none. There were no weapons of All mass right. okay. destruction. Okay. All right. Governor Bush. That you would impeach George W. Bush for getting into the Iraq War. I think uh, uh, he was a disaster, and I think it was one of the worst decisions ever made. He has totally destabilized the Middle East. Had Saddam Hussein still be in charge, you wouldn't have the problems that you have right now. I mean, if you had Gaddafi, if you had Saddam Hussein, if you had... Look at the migration. And now they're talking about taking 200,000 people. And you know what that's costing? Billions of dollars. No documentation. We have no idea where they come from. We have no idea who they are. And the one thing I notice, and I say it, and I say it to everybody, I look at the migration, they're all young. I mean, there's so many young, strong men. Saddam Hussein, whether they like him or didn't like him, he hated terrorists. He'd shoot and kill terrorists. When terrorists came into this country, which he did control and he did dominate, he would kill terrorists. Now it's a breeding ground for terrorists. So, uh, look, the war is a total catastrophe. Who do you blame? And they have a civil war going on. Who do you there. blame? Well, there's only one person you can blame, and that's our current president. I mean, obviously, Rumsfeld was a disaster, and other people that are giving him advice have been a disaster. And Condoleezza Rice, who's a lovely woman, but she never makes a deal. Perhaps even worse, the rest of the world hates us. You go throughout Europe. I travel. I do deals all over the world. 
The Europeans hate us. The Vice President Dick Cheney. He said the war was going fantastically just a few months ago. And, you know, it's just very sad. I don't know if they're bad people. I don't know what's going on. I just know that they got us into a mess, the likes of which this country has probably never seen. It's one of the great catastrophes of all time. Look, everything in Washington has been a lie. Weapons of mass destruction it was a total lie. It was a way of attacking Iraq, which he thought was going to be easy, and it turned out to be the exact opposite of easy. You know, nobody talks about the soldiers that are coming back with no arms and no legs. I mean, the thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands, and the Iraqis that have been just maimed and killed. This war is a horrible thing. Now, President Bush says he's religious, and yet 400,000 people, the way I count it, have died, and probably millions have been badly maimed and injured. What's going on? Everything's a lie. It's all a big lie. You could make a deal with Putin to I stop deal with his Putin. expansion? I would, I would be willing to bet I would have a great relationship with Putin. It's about leadership. Based on what? You're two macho on, guys? No, no, no. I mean, you Based know, on, on a feel. Okay? You know, deals are people. You sound I like George W. Wait, Bush. He, he looked no. into his soul and said he was a good yeah, guy. Come Bush, on. Bush didn't have the IQ. You know let, what I'm picking up from you. this? You'd buy Putin. You'd buy him all. I wouldn't buy him. I wouldn't buy him at all. I would be able to get along, in my opinion, with Putin. Now, it's possible not. I'm not saying 100 percent. But I think I would have a very good relationship with all Putin. Right. And I'll tell you what. It's actually important for this country to do that. He hates Obama. And it's not like we're winning anything. You know, it's one thing to be hated, but we're winning. Putin is beating Obama at every corner. I think so, yeah, I think Free so. golf membership for him? No, not that. I, I, think he, I think we would get along very well. All right. So I think it's very important. By the way, it's actually a very important question. I think that you can't have everybody hating you. I've been dealing with politicians all my life. They are all talk, no action, never going to get done. They're controlled by the lobbyists. They're controlled by donors, and they're controlled by special interests. When I tell somebody to do something, I'm not going to get a lobbyist calling me the next day. Say, please don't do that.